Well, Manny, I really loved your message this weekend. One of the things I really loved was your opening about the different trees that you know about. I didn't know that you knew so much about trees. <laughs> I was curious if you had a favorite tree. Probably it would have to be the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk about that one in my message. But yeah, I mean, oh, think man. about what Christmas represents and so you know, the celebration and... Uh, yeah, I don't. I researched the trees that yeah. you, that I talked about, but um, I'm not into trees. I'm not an arborist. <laughs> it's or, not your thing. It's not my thing. Okay, got it. <laughs> the Christmas tree that is probably the most famous Isn't tree it? of them all. That is, yeah, yeah that's yeah, really yeah. smart. Oh man, I, I mean, I love this psalm. You know, I don't know anything about trees either, but um, I love this idea of being planted, yes. being rooted, and being nourished by God's word, being able to be someone who's like a tree that produces and thrives and benefits the lives of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I love those points that you made in the message about that. I want to talk about that word blessed. You know, the Psalms, that Psalm talks about the blessed yes. person and that word, you know, in um, kind of Christian culture around the church, we say that a lot. And uh, I think probably most of us know what it means, but maybe we don't know what it means too. Yeah. I was wondering if you can kind of break down what that word actually means means in the context of Psalm 1 to kind of help us get started with knowing where to go in Psalm 1. Oh, absolutely. Well, it begins by saying this person is the blessed man. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, it actually doesn't define it for us, but it gives us an illustration in verse 3 mm -hmm. of what this man would be like. You know, he does three things in verse 1. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, he doesn't do the three things in verse 1. He does the two things in verse 2. Right. And he shall be like this tree. Mm. And so it goes on to describe the tree. And even though I, in the sermon I break down a little bit as far as some of the qualities, yeah. I think we have to take a step back and think what, is, what are the characteristics, the, the overarching quality of this tree? And really what I see is a tree that is vibrant, that is thriving, mm. that is healthy, that is robust. I think the mistake we make is that we assume that blessed means, and we impress our definition yes. on it, is everything's hunky dory. Right. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There mm -hmm. are no problems. There are no challenges. God must not be blessing me mm -hmm. if life is hard and difficult and challenging or I'm in a valley. We often think that blessing, living this blessed life or being a blessed person or having blessings from God is only when you're on the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. But that's not what this picture is describing. It's describing a tree that is healthy, robust, and able to withstand the challenges, the twists and turns, the ups and downs mm. that the environment might throw its way. Yeah. You know, there's a wow. stability, there's a robustness, there's a, despite what's happening in the environment, it remains planted, secure, and fruitful. And so that's the, it, it doesn't define it for us, but it gives us an illustration, a picture. And I love that it does that mm -hmm. because it keeps us from spoiling and reducing blessing to just, oh, well, it's, it's only for those who are healthy and wealthy. Wow. I love that. Yeah, that picture is helpful. Yeah. I like that you said planted and rooted. I was curious if there were, um, for you personally, Manny, if you wouldn't mind, just like, are there practices that you have in your life where they help you stay planted, help you stay rooted, help you stay in that kind of abundant, abiding life with God. What does that look like for you to be planted? I think uh, at the core, for me, it's uh, it's a phrase I didn't coin it, but it's a phrase that I've learned over the past mm -hmm. few years is staying fluent in the gospel, gospel mm -hmm. fluency. Yeah. When I keep the gospel as the lens through which I look at the world, with I look at my life as I look at the circumstances of my life. When I use that as my as my filter, mm -hmm. it has a way of keeping me grounded, you know, um, keeps me from getting too high on myself, but also it keeps me from getting too low on myself too. Yeah. Um, why is that? Because it's, it's Jesus, you know, the yeah. God. And so being able to be fluent in gospel, looking and experiencing the world through the lens and thinking through everything through that lens of the gospel is one of the things that keeps me grounded. Yeah. I love that, seeing the world through the gospel. How do you feel like the gospel gets, I don't know, how has it become more fluent to you? Are you in scripture a lot? Are you talking about the Bible a lot or about 
the gospel a lot. How does that look for you? What kind of oh, nurtures like that gospel sure. fluency? So absolutely, being in the Word, you have to know God's Word. And the theme from Genesis to Revelation is the gospel. Yeah, if, you're, right. if you're looking for it, mm-hmm. you have to learn how to sniff it out, how to <laughs> scratch it out. You can't just look at a story and say, hmm, you know, whatever, and say, you know, I got, because it's not primarily about you. You know, when you look yeah. at the lens through the scriptures, through the lens of you, of course, you're only going to see yourself and how this applies to you. But when you look for themes of Jesus and the gospel yeah. values of what God did through Christ, Everything from Genesis from to Revelation points towards that yes. climactic moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, number one, reading the scriptures and learning to understand the scriptures through that gospel totally. lens. Um, and then you have to practice it, kind of like mm-hmm. speaking a new language. Por ejemplo, yo puedo comenzar a hablar en español ahora. Y tú no me entiendes because you're not fluent. Mm -hmm. I said, for example, I can start speaking in Spanish right now because I'm fluent and you're not. (laughs) Or you don't understand me because I'm fluent and you're not. It sounded great, though. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) But that's what fluency is like. It's it's knee-jerk. It's the first response. You you don't have to stop and think, hmm, how do I say uh, microphone in Spanish? Oh, micrófono. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, it comes off right away. And so the more reps you get underneath you by reading yes. the scriptures and then l- on a day-to-day basis thinking through, man, how do I look at this through the gospel? How do I look at this? Mm-hmm. It just becomes more natural and and begins to slip off your tongue the way Spanish does to me. Mm. Does that's, that help? Is yes, that, that that's. I think that's so true too. I think about some people and myself included when I first got exposed to the Bible and to the gospel, I, I, I loved who Jesus was, what he did for me, he forgave me, that I had this new life with him. But I remember going to the Bible and just being like, I don't know. I, I, it feels foreign to me. It's not mm-hmm. fluent yet. And that can be discouraging for a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know? And it's, um, I think those early moments of being a Christian, you're caught up with Jesus, but you can get kind of confused with the Bible. And to know that it does take reps. Mm-hmm. You, you have to practice. Mm-hmm. You need teaching. Mm-hmm. It takes just a while to get it yes. under your belt. That's so encouraging to know because it's just it's not always instant that you just know everything yes. and receive everything too, although God opens himself up to you, but it just takes time. So that's mm-hmm. a really encouraging word just to know it's a fluency kind of thing. You have to use guy get in the culture of it. Yes. You gotta live with it, yes. you know. And finding those opportunities when you know, when you sin when someone sins against you, when you're mm. offended, someone offends you, um, when you tragedies happen in your life, when yeah. you observe tragedies in the lives of others, purposely, God, what is the gospel perspective? How does the gospel speak to this? Mm. You know, that's how you get those practical repetitions and yes. not just continuing to think the way you normally thought, you know, uh, or Teach. the way you've thought in the past. Let me pause. God, what is the how do I look? And you reach out to others. Hey, you're gospel fluent. How do I look at this? What, what's the gospel theme in this? You know? Yeah, man, it's so good. One of the things we were talking about in this chapter was about good counsel mm-hmm. and how the blessed person doesn't listen to that n- negativity, that those, those voices that lead away from faith. Yes. They listen to the voices that lead them to faith. And I was just thinking about, you know, those of us who maybe we feel like when we go to our first people, you know, the people who are closest to us, that maybe those people are negative Mm -hmm. or they don't share the same faith that we do. And maybe we're feeling like, man, I'm kind of discouraged in my faith because I don't have a faith community really around me. How do I get that faith, those good voices in my life? What would you say to that person who's just looking for someone to resonate with their faith? Where do they find those people? How do they develop those relationships. Do you have any thoughts about that? Or get those voices into their lives? Books, podcasts, do you go to a small group? Absolutely. I think all those are places where you look. Obviously, you go where other Christians gather um, the church, uh, a small group, um, podcasts, books. You start, you know, ask others who are, hey, who do you listen to? Mm -hmm. Who are people that, you know, 
that are looking for friends that need relationship. I'm looking for community too. Can you help yeah. connect me? Do you know anybody who needs connection that I'm looking for connection? Mm-hmm. Um, so it happens within community. Uh, I, that's, that would be the first place I would mm-hmm. start is reaching out to others that you already know yeah. and saying, hey, I, want, I need good counsel. I need good friends around me. How do I find those people? Um, your pastors, maybe it's another godly f- yeah, uh, friend, a godly friend that you have, um, family members who are who have been walking with Jesus. So, yeah, yeah. you're talking to you in the message about role models and how you looked up to certain people as examples of faith for you. And um, I was curious if you can kind of help us understand a little bit about how you chose those people to be mm-hmm. your role models. What kind of things were you looking for? And a role model as you were starting to live out your faith and gain more understanding of scripture and what this Christian life looked like. What were those things that you're like, that person, I need to live like them. I need to ask them what they do because they got the, the life I'm kind of looking yeah. for in this Christian life. Well, I, I, I don't think it was always intentional or purposeful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't there because there's nobody who was the complete package. Mm-hmm. Only Jesus yeah, is. Amen. And, some people I didn't connect with and you know in particular ways uh, but one of the people that was very instrumental and influential in my life was uh, Pastor Nate's dad Bill Holdridge mm-hmm. you know I was a youth pastor here at Calvary a little over 20 years ago and I was just a young you know guy trying to figure out my calling trying to figure out my life <laughs> and here was this man who had a tremendous grasp of God's grace, mm. and he lived it out. He taught it. He not only taught it, he lived it out, and I was a recipient of that mm. grace. Um, when I saw, when I would observe him teach God's word, this, um, I like to describe his teaching as meat and potatoes. Mm. The essentials. Yeah. The essentials, yeah. solid diet hearty, um, where, you know, you're going to feel full spiritually so and you still have more to chew on to, ex- he doesn't do all the thinking for you, but he gives you the meat and the potatoes. I wanted that. Mm. And so I would often, you know, ask him questions and have him coach me on my teaching and learn how to properly interpret the Bible. Um, and, I imitated what I saw and, you know, the great, you know, and how he extended grace to other people. Mm. Um, so that's uh, one of the people that stands out in my mind that was very influential. Not, not in every area. Right. You know, there are other areas that there were other men in my life who were influential that I looked to as mentors and uh, mm. guides. Yeah, so. for sure. That's so good. One of the things you mentioned as well is about our speech and, um, I think the way the psalm says it is that the the blessed person just doesn't sit in the seat of the mockers. I think yeah. is what it says is it has to do with our speech. Mm-hmm. And um, I was curious from you. I mean, we all have our things we're working through with the way we talk to people and to ourselves and all of that. I was curious if you'd be open to sharing with us maybe like a way that God has transformed your speech, maybe mm-hmm. with your wife or with yourself or the people around you. What did you used to talk like, and how do you talk now? <laughs> Are you still working on it? Is I'm, God still working I'm on still it? I'm still a work in progress when it comes to that. Absolutely. I think yeah. this side of heaven, we all will be. But, um, yeah, as someone who is a communicator, and personality-wise, I am quick to act. Mm. Um, that means to say I'm also quick to speak. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, in addition to that, there was a time where I was very uncomfortable with feelings and emotions mm-hmm. in other people or even in myself. Yeah. Um, I've done some work, both mm-hmm. therapy work, spiritual work, prayer. And one of the things that God has showed me, it, God has grown me in, is being able to sit and be okay with feelings, both within me and with others. And one of the tips, tricks, tools that I've learned mm-hmm is to lean into that and be curious, not to be shut down and shut off. Be curious by asking good questions. Mm. And so becoming, using my speech, instead of you know, s- yeah. spitting out information and being quick to answer and offer, being quick to be curious and 
use my speech to ask questions, to draw the person out, help them put the guard down, yeah. um, help them feel listened to, um, help them feel valued and heard. Mm. Um, in my marriage, that has been transformational. Yeah. Oh, amen. You know, to help my wife process things because I'm very quick. I can find the solution real quick, you know? Um, <laughs> and so, uh, that is one of the wise ways that I think we mm. should use our communication, our tongues is by mm. learning how to ask good questions and being curious about people and, um, not being quick to speak or to offer solutions. You might have the solution, but lay some groundwork first so that mm. you earn the right to be heard. And so. Yeah. There's a lot of blessing that comes from that. Doesn't it? That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Manny, thank you so much for talking with us about this psalm. I, w- I wanted just to ask, just in closing, if you had maybe a word for someone who wants to take that next step into being that planted person. Maybe they're feeling a bit uprooted right now and discouraged. Um, maybe it feels like a little stuck. How would you encourage them to take that next step towards living a life that's planted in God's word and his character Mm -hmm. and his new life they have with the Lord. Well, I think we can come at this Psalm and see those three things that blessed is the man who does not, um, walk in the counsel of the wicked, does not stand in the way of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of scorners, but in his law, he meditates day and night and he delights in the law of the Lord. Mm. He shall be like this tree. So we could come at it. And yeah, there are those lessons that come. Hey, let's do these things. But if we look at this through the gospel lens, we know that this will, this is a constant journey in our lives is not doing these things and doing the two things in verse two. Mm -hmm. That is what produces this blessed life, this tree that is this tree like life that is stable and vibrant. It'd be very easy for a, a young person who, you know, to beat themselves up and say, man, I'm not there yet. I still got to keep on trying, got to, you know, but who is this blessed man? Who is the only one who lives this out perfectly? I think the blessed man here is Jesus, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so to look at this Psalm through the lens of the gospel, you are already blessed because of who you are in Christ, Mm -hmm. because of what Jesus did for you upon the cross, his resurrection, he has poured out all of his blessings upon you. You have everything you need for life and godliness Mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Before God, he looks at you and he says, done, signed, Mm -hmm. sealed, delivered, lacking nothing. You are blessed. And so it's different when you live from from that standpoint and saying, okay, now I wanna live up to that. So I'm not going to do those three things in verse one. I'm going to do those two things. And why? Because I am already blessed. I'm not trying to achieve and earn blessing. I am blessed because of Jesus. So I think that's the proper way to live out this psalm. We pray that today's discussion has blessed you. For more information and to take the discussion further, you can visit nateholdridge.com for additional articles and content. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and share so we can continue to reach people and make Jesus famous in our lives and the lives around us. Until next time, God bless.